This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream, home to thousands of nonfiction documentaries from some of the best filmmakers in the world. Follow the link below to start your free trial today. 2019 was the year that finally killed climate denial for most average people. It's no longer possible to ignore the extreme weather and rising temperatures around the world. As if to show us what's to come in the new decade, we rang in the new year with reports of unprecedented chaos and destruction in Australia. Day turned to night, blood-red skies, soaring temperatures, citizens, refugees in their own land forced to take shelter in the ocean as fires consumed their homes. This is the new reality for much of the world. As we miss our carbon reduction targets, low-lying coastal regions and islands will flood and become uninhabitable. The Arctic will continue to melt at an alarming rate. Wildfires and droughts will become more common and last longer, and millions of people will be displaced from their homes, creating a global humanitarian crisis. In this episode, we'll focus on Australia, which has been a prime candidate for climate change for decades, but whose government refuses to do anything about it. Australia is a fascinating place. Both country and continent, island and first world economy, massive and relatively sparsely populated, Australia is fairly unique. It's home to over 20,000 endemic species of plants and animals, her oceans house the world-famous Great Barrier Reef, her wide landscape boasts rainforests, miles of arid desert and savanna, and ancient Huon pines many thousands of years old, some of the oldest trees in the world. Australia is a gem, a prime location for scientific research and vacation alike, but that might be about to change. This is Australia at the beginning of the new year. These hellish scenes look like something out of Mad Max, almost too unbelievable to be real. But to the residents in these burning towns, it's very real indeed. Some have put on a brave face. One bookstore put up a sign that reads, post-apocalyptic fiction has been moved to current affairs. But the situation is very grim. As of January 6th, millions of acres of land had been consumed by wildfires and 25 lives lost, 19 in New South Wales and several others in Victoria and South Australia. The death toll among wild animals is staggering. Experts estimate at least half a billion animals have been killed in New South Wales alone, and there are fears that some species may have been wiped out completely. We won't know for sure for some time, as this is only the beginning of the dry season, and the fires are expected to rage for months to come. In coastal areas, residents have been forced to retreat to the beaches, wrapping their faces in towels, wearing swimming goggles or respirators to try to fend off the smoke. The daylight fades behind a wall of thick smoke and an eerie red glow slowly fills the sky, announcing the arrival of the out-of-control fires. Flames have been reported to tower 200 feet in the air, and fire twisters have been spotted as well. The crisis has already generated what will surely become iconic images, from children in masks aboard boats watching their homes burn, to firefighters being overtaken by the inferno, this violent bout of climate-fueled destruction will be one for the history books. With all this in mind, surely the Australian government is addressing the issue of climate change in their vulnerable country, right? Appallingly, but perhaps unsurprisingly, they are not. The current Prime Minister, Conservative Scott Morrison, is a known climate denier and coal supporter. He once infamously brought a lump of coal to Parliament and urged people not to be afraid of fossil fuels. And it's not just the current leadership. The fossil fuel industry is a big money donor to both major parties. In December, as the fires were just beginning to explode, the leader of the opposition Labour Party went on a tour of Australia's coal mining communities to express his staunch support for fossil fuels. The Australian government has fought since 1996 to oppose international climate change agreements and currently ranks 57th out of 57 countries on climate change action. This may not come as a surprise, since Australia is the world's top exporter of both coal and gas. The common deflection when pressed on climate change issues is that, as a country of only 26 million people, Australia doesn't produce many emissions compared to China or the US. While that may be true, it needs to be put in perspective. First, their exports of fossil fuels allow these other countries to keep polluting at a breakneck pace. And compared to the rest of the world, Australia still ranks number 16 in carbon emissions. The fact that fossil fuel-friendly politicians continue to win elections comes down to shady practices and propaganda. Mr. Morrison, for example, was basically carried to victory by the fact that Clive Palmer, a coal oligarch, formed a puppet government and spent twice as much money as the two major parties combined to block the path to victory for Labour. While the Labour Party is definitely not perfect when it comes to climate change, they had agreed to some reasonable climate mitigating actions, which Morrison had not. After Morrison's victory, Palmer announced his plans to build the biggest coal mine in Australia. On the propaganda side, Australian media is dominated by Rupert Murdoch, the man behind Fox News. 58% of daily newspaper circulation backs his climate denialism. It is this spread of misinformation and denial of climate change that allows fossil fuels to continue to destroy the planet. 
It's especially spiteful in this situation because the Australian government has chosen to turn a blind eye to the catastrophe unfolding in their own country. Millions of animals burned to death or suffocated. Ancient forests, never before touched by fire, destroyed. At least 25 people killed. Homes turned to ash, entire communities cut off from support and communication. Add to this latest disaster the death of much of the Great Barrier Reef, the disappearance of the giant kelp forests, and entire regions running out of water as they suffer through record droughts. Australia is perhaps the most poetic place to be ravaged by climate fallout. A country that experts have been warning us is vulnerable for 20 years, whose primary export is the means of its own destruction. We've watched the coral reefs die, we've seen the more frequent and powerful tropical storms, and now we're seeing blazing wildfires that have torched areas never before damaged by fire. This is the legacy of the fossil fuel industry and complicit world leaders. The people of Australia have had enough and are now fighting for real climate change mitigation, just as people around the world have decided that this is the issue for the new decade. The climate crisis will only get worse from here on out. It's up to us, normal people, to decide whether we hold our leaders accountable and demand the change that will ensure a livable future. If you'd like to learn more about the specifics of climate change, take the time to watch Climate Change by the Numbers on CuriosityStream. It's a fascinating two-part documentary by three mathematicians about the past, present, and future of the climate. Released in 2015, it shows just how drastically things can change in five years. If you watch my videos, you'll know that I'm a big fan of CuriosityStream. It's an online streaming service with thousands of nonfiction titles from some of the best filmmakers in the game. You can find tons of great episodes like Climate Change by the Numbers, and they've got a bunch of material on Earth science and outer space, which are some of my favorites. Their giant catalog includes content on science, nature, astronomy, technology, and lifestyle, among others. Unlimited access starts at just $2.99 a month, and as a special offer for Second Thought fans, you can get a free trial by following the link below. CuriosityStream is available on just about every platform you can imagine. So wherever you are, you'll always have access to great, interesting content. As an added bonus, your CuriosityStream subscription now comes with a free Nebula subscription. Nebula is a new streaming platform built by and for creators like Wendover Productions, Real Engineering, Kurtzgesagt, and of course, Second Thought and many others. It's a place for us to try new things and make original content that just wouldn't be possible on YouTube. Give CuriosityStream a shot and get free access to Nebula when you visit curiositystream.com slash secondthought.